Hello everyone, this is Paris. Welcome to Budget Holics. In today's video, we're going to go over the five most common and the five most impactful mistakes investors make. I myself have made these mistakes and I can speak from personal experience when I tell you that avoiding these practices will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. If you're new to this channel and you're interested in personal finance, investing and wealth building, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you're a returning investor, stick around as this might ring a bell or two. The first mistake beginner investors tend to make is cockiness. To some extent, this is the fault of pop culture leading investors to believe that they're the next Wolf of Wall Street or the next Bobby Axelrod. What beginner investors don't seem to understand is that in order to make an investment, you need to put a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of research into it. Warren Buffett reportedly reads 500 pages a day about his current investments and about future investments. In contrast, most new investors tend to think that they've found the perfect asset to invest in and this might be a cryptocurrency, this might be a stock, this might be a new real estate asset. To some extent this might be the fault of content creators as well. As we present you our research and if the video or the article is compelling enough you go and try to duplicate our results. The truth is that watching a 10 minute video will never give you enough information to reach your desired financial goals. Therefore, you should do your own research even if you read an article about an asset you really like or if you watch a video that's really compelling. But Paris, but Paris you made, you a, made video a video about, about how, to how to start investing, investing for beginners, beginners and now you're saying, saying that, that we cannot, cannot just start investing, investing for beginners, beginners in those steps. steps. No, I made this video and I stressed out that you should do more research. Watching a 10 minute video is not a stairway to financial success. The problem with being cocky and relying in too little information is that you can have two equally destructive outcomes. The first possible outcome of investing in an asset you have researched poorly is that your investment fails and then you start losing faith in investing and stop investing altogether. The second possible outcome is that your investment succeeds and you experience confirmation bias. Confirmation bias refers to looking at evidence and only accepting the evidence that proves your initial hypothesis. In this case, you essentially gambled, your gambled paid off, and this means that you should keep gambling. The problem with this philosophy is that, as in the case of gambling, when your investments are based in poor research, you might fail. And the problem with failing later rather than earlier is that firstly, as your investments pay off, you tend to invest more money. And secondly, if this failure takes place later rather than earlier, you'll have less time to make up for this loss. If you've made a profit from a speculative investment, the best way to deal with it is to treat it like you caught a lucky break, similarly to getting a winning lottery ticket. If you lost money, treat it as a lesson, reflect on what you did wrong and improve the next time. Do not treat it as a deterrent to investing. If it was an investment early in your life, chances are you'll have a lot of time to make up for this loss, as this amount might be inconsequential in the long run. The common denominator in both scenarios is to treat it as a once in a lifetime result. As time passes and you improve your ability of analyzing assets, your return will increase. But in order to reach that point, you must avoid mistake number two. Never buy things you don't understand. So I don't think you have to totally understand Bitcoin to, to use it, to buy it and invest it in, in an asset class, similar to most people don't understand how email works. This applies to stocks, this applies to real estate, this applies to cryptocurrencies, this applies to every asset. When beginner investors look at a the stock, they tend to treat it as some random numbers on a screen. This is not at all the case. When you buy a stock, you buy a company and in order to correctly decide which company you'll buy, you'll need to understand both what this company is doing and what the product they're selling is worth. If you do not incorporate those two things in your stock purchases, your investments are bound to fail or at least experience minimal returns compared to the S&P 500, for example. Investing in cryptocurrencies is even trickier. However, although the asset has not been with us for long, there are 
tons of websites and other online materials that will help you understand what each cryptocurrency is, the pros and the cons of each cryptocurrency, and the potential benefit each cryptocurrency has. If you avoid this mistake, if you only buy things you understand, it will allow you to avoid mistake number three. However, if you don't avoid this mistake, number three is the next trap you will fall into. Mistake number three is succumbing to peer pressure. Everybody's buying Tesla, so you have to buy Tesla. Everybody's buying Bitcoin, so you have to buy Bitcoin. Everybody's buying a house, so you have to buy a house. Under no circumstances can you let what everybody else is doing affect your investing strategy. And this means that you should not succumb to fear of missing out, meaning being afraid of missing out on returns other people might experience. This is a mistake I made myself, funnily enough, after investing for some time. When you start reading about assets, what other investors are doing and what are their returns, you get the false idea that by duplicating their portfolio in the present, you'll have the same results they have. However, when people research an asset, they usually, or they should, determine the price at which they're willing to buy it. Buying an overpriced asset now because it's been in Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio for 20 years does not make any sense. If you're overconfident and you think you found a shortcut to investing by duplicating the portfolio of Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio, or even worse, by copying the portfolio of a random guy on YouTube, your investments are again doomed to fail. These people, even the ones who have demonstrated returns over the past 10, 20 or 30 years, always do a lot of research. And in the case of large hedge fund managers, they don't announce what they're buying at the time they're buying or at the price they're buying. They announce it later. And this makes sense. Warren Buffett as a businessman sells the fact that he can buy good companies at the right price. If he gave this information away, he would essentially be giving away his salary. Also, buying into the portfolio that someone has built over the past five years will prevent you from finding the right assets to buy now, thus further diminishing your potential rate of return. This brings us to mistake number four, which is underinvesting. There are various reasons that might cause you to underinvest. Number one is you don't have enough money, which then means that you either have a low income, in which case, Try to invest in yourself, become better at what you're already doing and possibly look for a side hustle or look for a better job, a better paying job or get a raise and a promotion in your current job. And the other part of not having enough money is not correctly budgeting your money. An example of not correctly budgeting your money is you're spending too much. And this is the case in the lives of many young professionals who experience lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation means that as your salary is increasing, your living standards are increasing. And to a degree, that's acceptable. As your salary increases, you try to eat healthier, you try to live in a better neighborhood. And if you're at that stage of your life, you try to provide more for those you care. Your uh, spouse, your children, even your parents at some time. However, there is a point after which you're spending more without needing to spend more. If your salary increases, for example, you don't necessarily need a new car. You can still do the same things using your old car. Budgeting is a very important thing to do when it comes to your personal finance. If you want to learn more about budgeting, check out my video for which I leave a link up here and down in the description. And finally, the worst mistake investors make is not investing at all. There are various reasons that might cause people not to invest. One reason is that your budget is so poor, you cannot find any money to invest. Another reason is that people try to time the market. If timing the market was a thing and people could successfully consistently do it, investors like Warren Buffett would pull all their money from a market and then rebuy everything at a lower price. Timing the market is not a feasible goal. A much more useful strategy beginner investors can implement is dollar cost averaging. This means that you set out a specific amount you'll invest within a month or a year and you buy the assets you're interested in and that you've researched thoroughly during that period. By dollar cost averaging, you protect yourself from price volatility, this constant up and down in the stock market. You don't need to watch for that. And thus, you just focus on investing in assets that have real future value. This is why I recommend passive investing especially for beginner investors. 
Another thing you can do when beginning to invest is trying a free virtual broker without putting any money into your investments. Maybe try it for a month and see how you're doing. See if you're comfortable with what you're doing. Afterwards, you can start dollar cost averaging, ideally small amounts at the beginning. Once you start to get the hang of it and you also start to get better at doing research in your assets, then you can increase the money your dollar cost averaging into the market. If you found those tips helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this helps me immensely with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please share this video with anyone you think will benefit from it. Let me know in the comments below what you think are the most common mistakes beginner investors make or even mistakes that experienced investors tend to make. And let me know if you've fallen prey to any of those bad practices.